New Year, new me. Welcome to a new episode of A Dose of Sass. We're going to get into New Year's resolutions, New Year's goals. It's that time of year. It's the pressure cooker time of year where you need to suddenly be your perfect self or at least act like you're getting there (laughs) or else. First, I'm going to tell you what goals not to set in the new year. And these are some of the most popular ones that I saw on TikTok that I'm like, no, just (laughs) I'm going to tell you right now. No, but stick around because at the end of this episode, I will have how to set actual, healthy, realistic, achievable, sustainable goals when it comes to healing your relationship with food and body and exercise. And if some of the ones I list in the first half of what I think you should not set are some of the things on your list, or you're like, Caitlin, did you actually literally steal my journal and read it aloud? Don't worry. (laughs) I'm not here to shame you for setting those goals. They're, They're popular for a reason, but I am here to challenge the way that you think about them and give it to you straight. So I'm like, where do I want to start? I have a whole list here. Let's just start with the most general be healthier. If it's eat healthier, better, cleaner, what does that mean? Does that mean eating more protein, eating more veggies? I'm going to tell you right now, if it's cutting out certain food groups, no, don't do that. Healthier does not mean eating less. I'll dive into how we can make that better in the second half, but please, if your list just says be healthier, eat healthier, eat cleaner, eat better, scratch it out. Let's start over. Also just working out, working out for at least 30 minutes, three to five times a week. Blah. Here's the thing. When it comes to setting goals, so many people tell you the SMART acronym. I learned this when I was in school and it is SMART. (laughs) No pun intended. It is helpful if you're like a business or a brand or for financial goals, but don't make SMART goals, SMART being the acronym, when it comes to like your physical body. SMART, if you don't know what it is, stands for specific, measurable, actionable, what's the R? Realistic and timely, but it's too rigid. Healing your relationship with food and exercise and body is a lifelong journey. Set your goal to be, and I'm going to reiterate this all at the end, move your body more. Find a way to have intentional movement every day. See how much gentler that feels? Work out three to five times a day. Like, it's so harsh. And I'm not here to be like, soft girl, soft life. But like, movement should be fun. If you want to work out and you want to move your body more and you want something that's going to be more consistent, make that your goal. Work out consistently. For you, that might mean twice a week. And that's perfectly fine. Moving your body more than you did before. Excellent goal. Working out three to five times a week for 30 to 45 minutes. I know it sounds specific and therefore achievable, but it's also too rigid. I have a feeling if you're listening to this podcast that you have dealt with the all or nothing mindset in the past, the diet restrict cycle, that giving yourself something like I'm going to work out for 30 minutes a day. If you don't make it to the 30 minute mark, it's a failure. 28 minutes. mm, Sorry. Try again tomorrow. And if you get to week two of January and you haven't done that, try again next year. Stop setting these smart goals when it comes to physical health. Because if you really want moving your body to be a part of your life, don't set it as a New Year's resolution. Find ways every day or however consistent that looks for you for it to fit into your life. And if if you can't imagine yourself realistically being able to do 30 minutes a day every single day for the rest of your life, then don't set that as a goal. (laughs) A five minute workout is still a workout. Walking your dog still counts. Playing with your kids still counts. Going to the trampoline park with your niece and nephew or just by yourself because they're so fun still counts. And if you do all that and you go, oh, but I didn't do my 30 minute gym specific workout. Who cares? Moving right along, another common <laughs> common New Year's resolution is 10,000 steps a day. Get, I'm going to get 10,000 steps a day. First of all, that's made up. Maintenance phase, I'm probably going to shout them out continuously in this podcast. Maintenance phase is one of my favorite podcasts for learning about diet culture in like a much more educational sense, but it's also super entertaining. But the 10,000 steps a day rule is literally a made up number. There is no scientific evidence of health improvement when you hit the exact 10,000 mark. Now, getting more steps in your day, an excellent goal, but don't 
freak out if it's not 10,000. That's a made up number. Again, we don't need to be so, so specific and measurable when it comes to these physical health goals. Okay, another very common one, if you're listening to this on January 1st, the internet's probably told you it's a really great day to start 75 hard. 75 days from now, you could be unrecognizable by spring break, unrecognizable by summer, be a whole new person. (sighs) There are other people on the internet, Fit Literate, Wellness Check Pod, who have done full episodes on 75 hard, so I'm going to try to keep this brief. But let me just tell you the quick rules of 75 hard and tell you why they're absolute crap. Um, First, two 45-minute workouts a day, one of which must be outdoors. Huh? An hour and a half of exercise every single day is not realistic or necessarily healthy or accessible for everybody. Don't destroy the next 75 days of your life, your social life, just to get in two 45-minute workouts, one of which has to be outside. It's January, first of all. Nobody wants to be outside. And like I already said, 45 minutes isn't the magic marker of whether the workout is good enough. These are literally just made up. So that's just completely unrealistic. Follow a diet. I mean, luckily they don't say follow the 75 hard diet. That's going to be some kind of insane restrictive thing. But no, I hope if you're listening to this podcast that you know this is a diet free zone. Diets don't work. Diets are garbage. (laughs) Don't do a diet. Even if you're like, well, it doesn't say that I have to cut out certain things. So I'll just say I'm following a diet and my diet will be, you know, eating three meals a day. Okay. But like, do you need to really say that then? Don't even call it a diet. Get that word out of your vocabulary. It's tough because the word diet without the context of diet culture really just means what you eat in a day. And so, of course, everybody's diet, literal diet, is going to look different and going to be different person to person. But because diet is so entrenched in diet culture and in society's expectations of what that word means, it's really, I like to just remove it from my vocabulary entirely because I know that my brain, if I say the word diet, is immediately going to jump to restriction. What, could, what do I have to cut out? What are, what's my calorie count? How long is this going to be? So, yeah, there's just saying follow a diet, but I, I don't like it. Um, the, th- the next rule is no alcohol or cheat meals. Ugh. You're just signing up for a 75 day diet with no cheat meals. So you're setting yourself up for the biggest binge of your life on day 76. Drink a gallon of water. That's so much water. How about just drink more water? Okay. Drink some water. Read 10 pages, nonfiction. Audiobooks don't count. Blech. Garbage rule. You don't need to read nonfiction if you don't want to. And yes, audiobooks count as books. I'm still sorry. I know I told you I'd keep this brief. The last thing, this is so stupid. It says take a progress pic. They want you to take a progress pic every day. Those are the rules of 75 hard. 75 hard touts itself as a mental toughness challenge. It's not a mental toughness challenge if your entire website is filled with before and after weight loss photos. Sorry. You want me to take a progress pic every day and follow a diet and do two... 45 minute workouts every day and drink a gallon of water and have no cheat meals. And you're telling me that's a mental toughness challenge. I know that there's this whole, like your mind is stronger than your body, but like, just call it a diet, man. That's the 2024 version of it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's not a weight loss challenge. It's a mental toughness challenge. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. I have one more thing to say because I feel like most of the internet has been like, yeah, 75 hard is a little bit It's a little bit too harsh. It's a little bit too masculine. It's a little bit too intense. How about 75 soft, 75 medium? And then there's one I came across towards the end of 2023 called 75 hotter. This is 75 hard for the girls. And I'm not going to break down everything that she said. It's by a creator named Jade. But there's just a few. If you've seen this trend, I'm just going to point out a few of the red flags in the rules she set here. First of all, she says 10,000 hot girl steps a day. Again, it's a made up number. If you want to go for a walk every day, go for it. The diet, prioritizing protein and greens at every meal. Okay, that's fine. What I'm really mad about is this three bite rule. We're not depriving, we're balancing. So you get three bites. We're not cutting anything out. We're not on a diet. But if you want something that is maybe not the cleanest, healthiest, most nutritionally dense, you only get three bites of it. Tell me that's not restriction. Red flag. That's like... 
unhealthy relationship with food behavior 101. I remember deep in my diet days, deep in my binge days, truthfully, I would like eat some ice cream and then be like, that's the last time I'm going to have that. And I'd throw the ice cream in the trash and like put soap and water in it so that I couldn't dig the ice cream back out of the trash. That's what this rule, that's the energy this rule has. You can have a cookie, but you can only have three bites of it. I'm sorry. How is that not restriction? And how is that helpful? <laughs> that's like, you can smell the chocolate. You can look at the chocolate. You can keep the chocolate in your house. Just like, don't have it for 75 days. Red flag. There are other goals about reading and drinking water and calling your friends, all of which are fine. The only other red flag that I'm going to point out from her list is when it goes comes to working out. She's aiming for five times a week, which is, might not be realistic for everybody. And then she specifically says that a walk is not a workout. You need to sweat. No. No. Nah. <laughs> that one makes me so mad, especially as someone who like lives on her walking pad. Walking counts. Everything counts. Stop letting people on the internet tell you that you can only do a specific type of workout for it to count. You have to sweat. You have to do it for 30 minutes. You have to do it five times a day, five times a week. <laughs> I'm so tired of it. Walking is good for you. If you want to walk more in 2024, don't let somebody convince you that that's not a good enough goal because it absolutely is. You do not have to be dripping sweat, muscles shaking, falling on the floor at the end of your workout for it to count. 75 hard, 75 hotter, 75 soft, 75 for the girls. Just stay away. Ah, uh, what next? I told you I was going to talk about dry January. This is one that like is so common. I feel like in corporate culture, this was such a conversation like week one of January at corporate lunch in the office. It's like, what are your 2024 goals? Is anybody doing dry January? And here's the thing. It is so normal and common. If you've spent the holidays consuming more alcohol than maybe you normally would throughout the year, it is normal to want to cut back in January. And there is nothing wrong with that. And if you feel like you have an unhealthy relationship with alcohol that you really need to go cold turkey for an entire month to feel back in control, go for it. If you're feeling, oh, I just really want to cut out alcohol because I just feel so bleh at the beginning of the year. I really overdid it. I ate so much. I drank so much. I need a detox. I need a diet. I need to go back to the gym. I need to do dry January. All of these things, it makes sense that they go together. But your reaction to feeling bloated, to feeling stuffed, to feeling slow, lethargic, heavier maybe, hungover, does not need to be a giant overcompensation. It's unrealistic and it's unsustainable. Take a week, take a few days. Dry January is not this magical health trick that's going to like fix your body. I don't know. It's just, it's always felt a little diet culture-y to me because people's goal at the end of, if it's like, oh, if all I do for January is cut out alcohol, then maybe I'll be a little skinnier by the end of the month. That's always the bottom line. It's masked under this, oh, I don't feel good. I want to feel better. But it's truthfully, I'm feeling bloated. My body might be looking different. I'm a little stiffer because I haven't moved my body in a while. And I would do dry January because it's like the socially acceptable way to pursue health without saying that I'm doing a diet. But truthfully, the end goal is the same. If you want to stop drinking alcohol for January, go for it. But you don't need to do dry January and work out four to five times a week and start 75 hard and start meal prepping and start doing 10,000 steps a day. Just pick one small goal. I want to drink less alcohol in January. Okay, manageable. We've talked about dieting. We've talked about working out. We've talked about eating healthier. One last thing I want to say before I get into how to set better goals is you don't need to become a morning person. You don't need to wake up early in order to be a better person. I used to think, oh, okay, you know, this is the year I'm going to wake up before work and work out. You don't have to do that. You really don't have to do that. If that's what works best in your schedule, great. If you like to work out in the morning, great. I don't. I like to work out at nighttime and then I go to sleep and I sleep really well. Your routine, your goals don't need to look like their goals. You don't need to wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the gym for 30 minutes a day. Are you sensing the trend here? In order to have the perfect health, perfect body, perfect year. Fitness, health, all of these goals that are great goals to have need to fit into your life because these are things you're going to have for life. So let's segue into 
How do you actually do that? Caitlin, if you don't want me to set the goal of, I want to lose weight, I want to eat healthier, I want to work out more in 2024, then what do, what do I do? I want to address the lose weight goal. Very, very common goal for everybody every year, no matter if you feel like you need to lose 100 pounds or 10 pounds. But I want to talk, I, I want to ask you why, if that is your goal, why? Be so, so for real with yourself right now. If it's to be healthier, first of all, let me remind you that the size of your body, the weight of your body is not the only components of health. Healthy habits are healthy habits, whether or not they result in weight loss. If you start moving your body more and drinking more water and eating more veggies and your body doesn't change and your weight doesn't magically fall off and your scale doesn't move, that doesn't negate all of that action. Losing weight is not the only way to be healthy. In fact, it's not always healthy for a lot of people. Weight does not equal health. And if you're like, well, Caitlin, the doctor told me I need to lose weight. Okay. I'm inclined to be a little bit hesitant, to be honest. I am not a medical professional. I'm going to be a little bit hesitant because there's just too many stories of people going in, I had a sore throat and the doctor told me I needed to lose weight. Then I'm going to be like, are you sure? <laughs> Not to you, to the doctor. What if instead we focus on healthy habits? Even if your blood work shows, yeah, my cholesterol is high, my whatever is high, I need, I need to make some improvements. Okay, that's still done by healthy habits. Because here's the thing, even if you do lose a lot of weight, your physical health, your blood work might not improve if none of your habits have changed. Someone could be a smoker and lose a bunch of weight and still die of lung cancer. Okay? <laughs> like, because they're still smoking. Like, the habits are what matter. So if your goal for 2024 is to lose some weight because you want to be healthier, let me encourage you to focus on the habits. Start small. Drink more water. Get better sleep. Think about what you can add instead of what you can take out. Don't try to cut carbs. Add vegetables. Add fruits. Can I find a way to walk five more minutes a day? Can I have one cookie instead of two? Those are so much more achievable and actionable and will result in actual health changes than just the blanket, I'm going to lose weight. And also, here's the thing, is that most of, most of the time, people's attempts to lose weight because they're so stuck on, I need to change this immediately. I need to lose 25 pounds in the next month. Then they're not going to do it by healthy means. There are ways to lose weight, absolutely. But to keep it off, to improve your health, to have it last long term, most of that is achieved by like an intense workout and an intense diet program. And those are not things that are healthy. So if your goal is genuine health, Focus on the habits. And I'm going to ask you again, deep in your heart of hearts, is it really about health or is it about your body? And if it's about your body, if it's about the fact that you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel confident, you got so much more attention when you are in a smaller body, you've gained so much weight the last year and you're feeling like an alien, changing your body is not the answer. And I know that sounds so annoying. <laughs> Because it sounded so frustrating to me for so many years. Let me tell you, at my smallest, I was my least confident. My self-esteem was in the trash, in the garbage, when I had my smallest body. Because body image is about your brain, not your body. You cannot hate your body into a version of yourself that it, you can love. Because here's the thing, is you get to that point, and it's still not enough. If you haven't done any work to improve your confidence, improve your body image internally, then your external body is never going to be enough. Okay, what happens when you lose the 25 pounds? Then what? You still look in the mirror and hate what you see because you haven't disconnected the idea that your external body is what determines your worth. Then yeah, your 25 pound body, your 25 pound less body is not going to be any more worthy. It's not going to feel any more beautiful, any more confident because you're still putting your worth in that. If your goal for 2024 is to be more confident and therefore lose weight, therefore be in a smaller body, no, <laughs> there are ways. I've done it. I am my most confident in my current body, which is the largest one I've had. You have to do the internal work. And if you're like, fine, Caitlin, fine. I'll do it in this body. 
I won't try to lose weight, but I do want to be more confident, blah, blah, blah. How do you actually do that? You have to decide that the body that you're in right now, it is more important to make peace than it is to be smaller right now. I'm not saying that you can't ever lose weight ever again. I'm not saying that you're going to perpetually gain weight forever either. But you have to start being okay. This is what this is the decision I made when I started on this journey is I said, okay, if if my body doesn't change from where it is right now, I want to be okay with it. And it did not happen overnight. I'll tell you. It's taken years. But there are baby steps you can take. First and foremost, clean out your closet. Keep clothes that fit you right now. Not the body you're going to have this summer. Not the body you want at the end of the year. Not the body you had six years ago. The body you have right now. And if you don't have clothes that fit your body right now, get some. You don't need to get a whole new wardrobe. Pick a few things. Pick a few safe outfits. Things that make you feel comfortable and confident. I promise you it's a game changer. When you start dressing in clothes that fit you, the first time I allowed myself to buy clothes from a plus size store as an adult was so freeing, so freeing. I'm like, wow, this actually fits so nice. I don't feel like I'm squeezing my body into a size that wasn't made for me. This is what properly fitting clothes is supposed to feel like. Wow, (laughs) what a concept. And yeah, I did have to do a little mental work to go, wow, I didn't think that was the size I was going to be or a size I would still be. Or the fact that the clothes in the back of my, and the jeans in the back of my closet, I might never fit in again. And that, it is okay to grieve that. But you deserve to find confidence and peace in the body you have right now and not the body that you want to have in the future. So clean out your closet. Also clean out your social media. The content you consume, the messages you see on a daily basis, even from your friends and family, have such an impact on your brain, whether you realize them or not. Start filling your feed with the messages you want to see. Not the workout gurus, not the fitness girlies and the health girlies and the the people who were doing 75 hotter. I used to follow those thinking they'd be motivation. In fact, they were just would send me into a shame spiral. They only made me feel worse about myself. Be conscious of what you're consuming. Add in accounts that make you feel good and also get rid of some. If you have accounts that you follow right now that you Every time you see their content, you feel worse about yourself. Whether that is you're comparing your life to theirs, you're comparing your body to theirs, your wealth to theirs, you don't need to follow them. Even if they're your friends, the mute button exists for a reason. The unfollow button exists for a reason. How to start finding confidence in the body you have right now instead of setting a weight loss goal every year. Clean out your closet, clean out your socials, and give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to be happy in the body you have right now. You cannot go backwards. Here's the thing. Your life isn't waiting to start when you get to the smallest version of yourself. Your life is happening right now and you're going to miss it. So let me leave you with these final takeaways. Start small. Baby steps are still steps. Be realistic. What can you add? Whether that comes to how can I add movement in my day? How can I add vegetables in my day? How can I add more positivity into my social media feeds? Healthy habits are still healthy habits whether or not they result in weight loss in your body changing. Your health is not just your weight. Set some goals for your mental health too. You deserve to be confident exactly where you are right now, your January 1st body. Also, while you're at it, delete your before album. I know you have it. Those pictures that are never going to see the light of day because you never want to be that body again. You're not a before and after. You're a body living. Life is happening right now. Act like it. Love you. That was so serious. New year, new me. New year, new you. Tell me what you end up making yours to be. DM me on Instagram at Sassin Cellulite. I want to hear about it and I want to cheer you on. Love you lots. Talk to you soon.